Let's talk about the subject of off-season bulking. The term bulking or a mass gaining or whatever you want to title it. Now, a lot of people have a few different trains of thoughts on this. I've done off seasons in a variety of different ways. I've done bulking where it's all out force feeding. You're sick of food, no matter if it's like rice or pizza, a donut or steak, you are just absolutely disgusted, repulsed by the sight of anything that could be consumed by your mouth because you're always stuffed. Just at any rate possible, you want to put on weight, see the scale go up. You don't care too much. You aren't too mindful of body fat accrual. You just want to see utmost scale weight go up because you're trying to pack on as much body weight as possible. And of course, you will worry about the body fat accrual later whenever you diet down. Uh, you know, a lot of times people, even natural, will do this and aren't enhanced, but a lot of times enhanced people will, will especially do this uh, method because, yeah, you are at an advantage because you have anabolic assistance to partition the nutrients into more favorable compartments, muscle opposed to fat. Um, you do have the ability to stay leaner whenever you're running androgens. Androgens in general, specifically certain ones that bind hard of the androgen receptor. You can stay leaner in the abdominal area, whatnot. Growth hormone plays a huge role in that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The problem with that method of bulking at all costs is, for one, you stop having any appreciation whatsoever for food. And I know we eat for purposes, bodybuilders, and who gives a shit about taste and you want just for function and growth. But it's also kind of nice to enjoy meals, enjoy flavor, look forward to eating, uh, look forward to after the meal whenever you aren't bloated and repulsive feeling. Those are all good things to keep intact. Uh, the downsides, though, to the seafood diet, the all-you-can-eat diet, even if you have a relatively or fast metabolism, uh, you will hit a sticking point. You will max out and you basically, once you get to a certain body, ha body fat threshold, whether that's 10% or 15% or 16%, uh, things will start signaling in the brain. So you're gonna start being nonstop satiated. Your hunger, your hunger signal is just non-existent. Your fat cells are filled up and they've probably multiplied and spliced and replicated and now they, you have more fat cells. Um, that's telling the brain basically that you're not hungry, uh, you don't need anything, but you're still forcing, forcing food. Uh, obviously, it's going to affect your blood glucose levels, your pancreas is going to release too much insulin. Uh, no matter what, no matter a big meal, small meal, it's not going to be efficient. Things are going to get really wonky. But the diehard bodybuilder in all of us, we force the issue. We force feed. I've done it. Whenever I was 17 years old, I was obsessive compulsive where I would chew my food, drink water, and swallow it like a pill. I mean, I had no, I couldn't even chew the food that, or I couldn't even. I couldn't even stomach it to chew it. I had to swallow it with freaking water. That's how far over the edge I went in that degree. And I actually gained body fat like I never had before with my metabolism, which is insane. Of course, I was natural back then, etc. But when you do these things, things start going wonky in the fact that your immune system now is fighting you. So you might even have a weakened immune system, even with a surplus of calories. Your digestion is, is god-awful. So now you aren't digesting food that's sitting, it's pulling in your stomach. Your insulin sensitivity is shot, so you're resistant. You have high blood glucose levels. Your blood triglycerides are high because you're consuming probably saturated fat. You don't give a shit. You're probably cheating at night with a bulking diet. So you have high fats from dietary fat, high blood sugar from simple sugars, complex carbs, what have you. Things aren't moving. They're sitting in your cells. They're glyc they can cause cell glycation. A lot of bad things are happening, but you still force the issue. And then whenever dieting comes down or comes uh, around, you now have a big mess to clean up. And you've heard it a million times, I'm sure, is uh, even with anabolics, even with clenbuterol, thyroid, et cetera, it's hard to differentiate at a certain point or actually um, pull solely fat and leave and protect just the muscle. You know, anabolics are amazing compounds, but, but still some people will still dissipate muscle tissue because they went too overboard with gaining body fat. Now the good thing, the good thing, but yet the hard thing is about staying leaner in the off season, keeping an appetite, 
keeping your body sensitized is that it's hard to be strict for people after a show. They don't want to. They don't want to freaking crunch numbers. They don't want to do cardio. They don't want to do things consistently. They don't want to drink water, hydrate their cells with a gallon and a half a day. They want to be more lenient and and have liberty to kind of do a little bit more things in everyday life. And I understand that. But if you do stay leaner and you track your calories, you are going to obviously look amazing because you're going to be lean year round in single digits. But you're going to be able to see what's happening to you whenever you change variables, as far as having a cheat meal. Have, changing the protein source, changing the carbs, you're going to be able to see what's going on with your body, and plus you're on anabolics, growth hormone, all that stuff, uh, then you're really going to be favorably putting on lean, solid tissue whenever you are in that slight surplus. But it's just hard mentally for people to really buckle down all year, let alone 16 weeks. So another thing that I noticed is whenever you're uh, at that point of no return that I'm going to call it, whenever you're bulking, your body fat's too high, you're not hungry, and you're force feeding, you kind of you kind of start going flat. Your body fat's high, but you're still your muscles can go flat because you're insulin resistant. So you're not really absorbing the carbs. So now it's like the worst thing in the world. You're fat and flat. You're not really that full and volumized because you aren't. Now you're you can't eat that much because now you're hindered. So you have to like drink your your calories through liquid. You want to skip meals. So it's just terrible. Whenever you're hypersensitive and you're leaner, you might go flat. But now if you fill out again and catch up with more food, you blow up, your veins surface, you get round and full again, you respond. You're now responsive. If you miss a meal, you work graveyard, whatever, and you're leaner. You work graveyard, you miss a meal, whatever, and you're fatter, you still stay flat. You start deflecting all the, basically the glucose and the glycogen, all that stuff. So I'm telling you, in my opinion, stay leaner in the off season, crunch numbers, be strict and rigid year round. Because you don't want to go to the point of no return whenever you're like, oh, I hate food. I got to switch to all liquid calories just to get it in. Because then you, like I said, you become flat and fat. Remember that. It's just true. Everyone's gone through it. Another thing, whenever you get sick and you're fat and flat and your body fat's too high and you're force feeding, now you're going to get smaller, shrink, get flat, and now you're like squishy, fat, and flat, and you're just really fucked. Whenever you're super lean, I won't say shredded, but really lean, and you get sick, you'll flatten out, but you'll fill right back out. You'll be super responsive once you feel better and you aren't ill anymore. You'll respond like a mother effer because you kept yourself sensitized. Simple as that, guys. I'm going to stop with this. I ramble on all night about bulking and stuff, but that's my take-home message to you is just don't go to that point of no return. It has worked. It it can work for some people, Um, but whenever you get to that point where you're just miserable and you want to vomit and you can almost literally have water come up because you have that close to vomit feeling because you're force feeding, not good. And your body fat's high and you have shit hanging over your belt buckle, not good. Don't get to that point. Stay strict.